pass over the agenda and amendments briefly for the GRTC presentation. Mr. Dagan, you heard it. Mr. Coles. Great. I'm Alvin Coles, the CEO of the GRTC Transit System. I want to thank you first for allowing us to come down and speak to you this afternoon on the GRTC's uh, budget. Uh, currently, GRTC is running a 1.6 budget charge for the upcoming uh, budget year. Uh, one of the highest costs of GRTC is our paratransit service. We have to get that service under control. What we are going to do today uh, with the Commission is to show you uh, some slides and explain to you how we managed to get into uh, that, that position. Uh, I'm going to ask Larry and uh, Henry Davis uh, as the CAO, Chief, CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and Larry Hayden as uh, Planning, Scheduling, and uh, Governmental Relations. Uh, as you know, GRTC have not received an increase in funding in the last three years. Uh, in fact, last year we received even less, but we were able to manage it. It's getting to the point where that budget uh, growth is becoming unmanageable. And again, uh, it's mainly because of our ADA service and the way we operate uh, the ADA service. Uh, our ADA service is 16 percent of our budget. We carry about 10 million passenger trips per year. Out of that 10 million passenger trips, just 2 percent is uh, our ADA customers, which is putting us out of whack as far as our budget is concerned. Uh, thank you for this 10 minutes. And I'm not going to speak to you I'm going to let uh, David and uh, Larry take over. Again, Larry Hagan, Director of Planning and Scheduling, GRTC. So uh, what we wanted to try to do in roughly 10 slides was explain to the committee how the care service works, number one. Number two, we also want to make sure that everybody understands the difference between the minimum federal Americans with Disability Act requirements for care and what we're actually doing on the street, because there is a big difference there, and it does translate to the end of the PowerPoint where we talk about the financial situation that we're in. So the first few slides that we want to cover with you all, the first two are really for your reference. I mean, this in two slides, we explain all the basics of the CARE system. Now, I'm really, I'm just going, I'm just going to touch the first bullet for a second because it's real important in terms of thinking about CARE. It's required by the Americans with Disability Act. It's curb to curb service and it's a shared ride service. It is not an individual taxi service, one person on that vehicle. It's supposed to be several. We try to maximize as many people on there as you can, moving them around. And it has to function as a complementary lifeline service to the fixed routes by being roughly three quarters of a mile around all of the fixed routes. And it has to operate at the same times of day and days of the week as the fixed routes operate. Not anybody can use the care service. Care is for folks that qualify for it, and they qualify by number one, on age. If you're 80 years old or older, you can qualify to use care. Or number two, which is probably more the majority of the folks that use our service, you have to qualify based on a disability. So you've had a medical exam, and you have been determined to be functionally unable to use the fixed route system. Then you can use the care service. Here we have some other specific information about how we provide it, but under using care, the last two bullets are important. The customer cost per trip is $2.50 one way. The cost for that trip to GRTC in, in the city is $30 one way. There's our ridership you can see there too per one way trip. So far this fiscal year, we've had 105,744 in the city. Now, this is uh, the, the meat of what we want to try to explain to you all. The difference between what is minimally required with the Americans with Disabilities Act at the federal level and what we're actually doing on the street today. All right, so that buffer you see around all the lines, that's a three-quarter mile zone around the end of each fixed route lines and each fixed route and along both sides of it. 
that represents the area that we have to provide care service for. Notice how it doesn't cover all of Henrico County. It does cover all of the city of Richmond pretty much. We provide care service throughout all of the, the city. Under the minimum federal ADA requirements, we only have to provide the service in the area that you see right there highlighted around the fixed routes, not the whole entire county. And as you see from the box, it says that's our service area Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. when Henrico fixed routes are in operation. When Henrico fixed routes are not in operation, you have a completely different footprint. See the yellow buffered area now? That is the minimum federal ADA required area when we don't operate in Henrico County fixed routes. It says there in the box, minimum required care service area on the days and times when Henrico fixed routes are not in operation. That's Saturday and Sunday and after 7 p.m. on the weekends. So that yellow area would be the minimum area you'd have to provide the service for during that time. And then when we have Henrico fixed routes in place, it's that buffered area behind there. Notice how neither one of them cover the whole entire jurisdiction of Henrico County. Okay, now we'll talk about what we currently do compared to the minimum requirements. Down there at the bottom in that box, that describes what we do. Service area, all of Richmond, all of Henrico County, the hours in Richmond, 4.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. seven days a week, Henrico County, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. Now, Henrico County fixed routes, they don't run seven days a week. They only run five, and they don't run on the weekends, and they don't run after 7 p.m. So on the weekends and after 7 p.m., that's what we would call non-ADA service, service outside of the required area. And the same would go for any trip that someone takes outside of that buffered area that you see. So what does this look like? There are the trips right there. In a typical year, that's where they spread around the whole jurisdiction of Henrico County in the city. You see a huge concentration of them in the city, of course. But then we do have trips that scatter out all throughout the county. For example, city residents going out to Short Pond for various reasons. So we also would call them any dock you see that's not in that buffered area. That's a non-ADA trip. The times when our, when our riders typically use the care service, Here's a graph that shows from February 1 to February 10th, 2013, the times that are in most demand. And it's clearly between 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. That's when most folks use our service. Notice how it drops off precipitously outside of that time zone. Last thing I want to share with you before turning over Henry and the finance piece, we did a peer review on complimentary ADA service to see how we stack up with what other folks are doing. Here's a list of all the systems that we looked at. And these are all systems that tend to compare to us based on, you know, an urban area that they provide service for, numbers of buses, things like that. So they're good comparison systems. Summary in that box, half of those systems, they don't do non-ADA service. They do not provide service at times or days or geographic locations outside of the minimum requirements of Federal Americans with Disability Act. Second book. The other half provide non-ADA service and they charge more for it or they make it subject to capacity availability. So what they're saying is, we'll provide a non-ADA trip for you, but we will only do it if we have the capacity for it and you typically have to reserve that on the same day. Our regular service, you can, you can reserve it up to seven days in advance if you want to, but you can't do it the same day. Here, what these other systems are saying is you do it that same day because it's going to be subject to whether we have the buses for it or not. And for non-ADA service, you can charge anything you want. You can make it be subject to capacity constraints. You can handle it however you want to. Third bullet brings it all together. GRTC is the only system out of this peer group to both provide non-ADA service and not charge more for it or have it be subject to capacity. So, what do you get for that? Well, for that, I'm going to turn it over to Henry for a minute to talk to you about the financial side. Thank you, Larry. Uh, <clears throat> this is a comparison. What we did was we are comparing cost per trip, uh, fixed route versus specialized. Starting in 2003, you can see that our fixed route cost was at $398, uh, specialized was at $17.22. Now, you 
before that 10 years to 2013, our fixed route cost per trip is at $4.23 compared to the specialized cost per trip is $30.12. So you can see definitely there's a big change uh, with the specialized. The increase in change percentage was 75% on the specialized side compared to the fixed route side about 6%. We, as GRGC, we do a great job of keeping our costs on the fixed route side uh, in, in line. Uh, unfortunately, the specialized side has increased the cost due to demand. Um, and as you can see, starting in 2003, as a percentage of the total budget, uh, fixed route is at 90% versus uh, specialized 10%. Now, going to 2013, you can see that now fixed route is up 84% and specialized is 16%. So you can see that the pie is shrinking. We, we only get a, a, a certain amount of pie, but that specialized is eating up um, most of the, more of our pie now. Uh, now, the five things I want to leave with you as far as when you're looking at this. Uh, one, uh, specialized cost per trip has increased $7 starting in 2008 when GRT started the extended trips, which you can see highlighted in yellow, where you can see 2007 specialized cost per trip was at 16.44, uh, but in 2008 when we started doing those trips, uh, it increased by $7 to 23.54. Uh, the second point that we've already talked about was that the cost per trip for specialized has increased over 75 percent, uh, and over 10 years the percentage of specialized expenses has become a larger part of the budget. And and as a result of being very efficient with the fixed route side, uh, the, the increase in the specialized cost uh, has been, uh, our efficiencies with the fixed route has, has uh, helped the specialized, helped the specialized cost. Uh, now we're getting to the core uh, with being as efficient as we possibly can with the fixed route. So any more reductions that we have to do with the fixed route side will hit our core, which would be uh, very troubling because that, that's our core. Um, so, and our fourth uh, bullet is that GRTC's total operating budget from the city of Richmond has stayed at 11 million from FY9 to FY12. We did in FY12 get a reduction from 11 million. And the last bullet point is that 16% of GRTC's operating budget is providing service for 2% of the total ridership that GRTC. We have come up with some proposed options. We have put in this uh, Senate request to the city for an increase in our budget for 12.6, which is 1.6 greater than what we get now. And we have two options that we want to propose. Um, one, our first option is that we want to raise the fare uh, for the 88 trip to $3. Currently it's at $2.50. We would like to raise that to three dollars and eliminate the all non ADA service. Uh, that is our first option. That's if we do that, we believe that we could reduce our budget request by about seven hundred ninety thousand. Uh, the second option uh, is that we would also request to raise the uh, fare for the ADA trip to three dollars, but for a non ADA trip, we would propose a rate of six dollars. Uh, we would eliminate non ADA service on the weekends and holidays and only provide that service between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on the weekdays only. Uh, we feel that that budget, uh, if, if, that go, if that option is chosen, that we would see, we probably could reduce our budget around 450000 Any questions? That kind of one last time. So here's where we are on this at this point. We have recommendations for the city. We know that this is a financial situation that we feel like needs to be corrected so that it can be a more sustainable model and that we don't continue to eat into the fixed routes over time, which is totally where we're going. What, what we need to know is how we move forward with the city on this. We have these recommendations. We try to put numbers to them. We put in this PowerPoint anyway a good explanation of how the system works and how it has translated to the budget problem. We just need to know what the next step is. And of course, answer any questions that you want to have. Anybody have any questions? Well, thank you.
pays for right now, even though that that's the minimum required area. And there's the comparison between the city and the, and the county when the county services are in place. And the county made a conscious decision that they want folks using that service to be able to travel throughout the whole jurisdiction. And the city decided that they want to match it days and hours wise. I'm not sure how else to answer that one because I think a lot of decisions probably went into it. But Any other questions? Presently, Henrico is looking at coming back on that um, non mandate service. Right now, I, I don't know exactly where they're going to go because this is you know, a big decision for the, the county. But they do have on the table looking at their entire transit service and budget fixed route to care, all the aspects of it, to try to figure out how they can keep the cost for that service in line with the budget funding that they have available for it. So it covers all of what we've talked about today, for sure. It could be changes to care, it could be changes to fixed route, it could be just a one or the other. I'm not sure where it's going to go. Just, I'm sorry, I'm not here late, but just to sort of clarify, so I understand, if I'm I'm qualified, I can call for a care van. They'll come and pick me up and take me to short walk to the shop. Correct. And then come back and pick me up here and come. Right, and that's $30 each way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 